there's nothing there that's telling me like she is some sort of um traitor or some sort of, of scammer and that she's a russian asset like hillary clinton is trying to say however with rahu being in the first house there could be a fake is Tulsi Gabbard a Russian asset like Hillary Clinton said? That's what I am looking at today using astrology. I'm Thor Sandwood and I have Tulsi Gabbard's chart pulled up in front of me right now. The issue with Tulsi Gabbard is I could not find a birth time online at all. So what I ended up doing is I'm using her moon sign as the Lagna. And this is a common practice for astrologers to use whatever sign the moon is in. Use that as the first house and have a generalized chart about a person. And so that's what I'm doing with Tulsi Gabbard. That being said, I won't be able to know... Uh, what kind of dasha she's in, what kind of mahadasha or bukti she's in. But we can take a look at her chart and see what we can get out of it because I love doing astral politics and this has been all over the news. Hillary Clinton, she got out on a podcast and said that the Russians were grooming Tulsi Gabbard to become a third party candidate. And obviously most people know that Tulsi Gabbard is very anti-war. She's very anti-regime change wars. Hillary Clinton represents the establishment, the old Washington establishment. So this is a very interesting fight that's going on. And then Tulsi Gabbard went on Twitter, I believe, and she said, you know, that Hillary Clinton was a warmongers. And this thing is heating up more and more. So I actually, I adjusted the time to 2 p.m. April 12, 1981. We know her birth date. And I just moved it to two so that the Lagna, the first house, could be where the moon is so it's easier to read the chart. One of the things I noticed right off the bat is moon is, first of all, it's a cancer. The moon is in cancer. And Rahu is in that first house with the moon. And Rahu, as many of you guys knew, know, Rahu is considered a malefic. It's a malefic influence, especially if it's in your ascendant. It kind of, Rahu's like the imposter the trickster somebody with rahu in the first house i would think of as somewhat of a chameleon they're they're changing their appearance or their personality or whatever traits they have to try to climb the social hierarchy or the social ascendance ladder they're trying to look like there's something that they might not actually be so rahu being in the first house you know with the moon because we're using moon as lagna kind of a little odd to be to be perfectly honest here and then even where we know that even if we had her birth time moon would still be with rahu so rahu with the moon can also indicate i was doing some studying with this someone lacking a moral compass and someone trying to appear to be patriotic because think about what the moon means moon is all about the homeland the mother so the motherland that's what the moon represents so rahu with the moon is like you could be faking that you're patriotic so that actually surprised me guys because i was thinking tulsi gabbard's totally patriotic she's in the national guard or the army or something like that and i thought you know she probably really is patriotic but with rahu and moon it could be some of the stuff that she's doing is for political expediency based on this astrology chart okay so it's very interesting with k2 being in the seventh house it tells me that her marriage partner would not be exceedingly important whatever house k2 is in is tends to be the house that we're apathetic about the the house that we're not very passionate about in this lifetime so you know she she got married because that, that rahu k2 axis of first house and seventh house you know, so marriage is definitely a karmic theme in her lifetime. But when K2's in the seventh house, it it's just this apathy about like, you know, like the attention's more about her and focused on me, you know, rather than the spouse. So sometimes I've seen K2 in the seventh house. It can mean kind of that this is not a fact about Tulsi Gabbard, but it could lead to promiscuity 
in marriage, like you're not loyal to the par marriage partner because you just don't really care that much about the partner. They're just kind of there, but you still go out and do your own thing. That's what it can mean. Uh, but I have no proof of that with Tulsi Gabbard. There's, you know, obviously I'm just looking at the chart. We have Saturn and Jupiter in the third house of Virgo. You know, third house, I think of it as your daily mentality. Think of how much of your life, when you go around and you're talking to people, the, the conversations, like over half of your conversations throughout the day, are all scripted conversations. That's third house. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. How's the weather today? Blah, blah, blah. So with Saturn being in the third house, it that's her mentality. So that could indicate a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress with her her daily mentality. So she might be one of those types that overthink a lot of things and you know they stew on it and they have a lot of anxiety uh, with their day-to-day -day thoughts. And Jupiter being there, the planet of expansion, expands that mentality. I don't know, whenever I see Saturn in a house, Saturn is the heaviest karmic planet in a chart usually. So it tends to spoil, you know, like the results, it's, it's never like a happy house. Even if Jupiter's there, I just don't, where, whatever house Saturn is, like the, the house with kind of the problems and then the houses that, you know, the third house and the 10th house from that sign, the houses that Saturn aspects, those are usually problem houses too. So it just seems like there's probably a lot of stress in her life. We have a lot of energy and focus with Tulsi Gabbard in the ninth house. We have Mercury, Mars, and the sun there. So that shows a lot of the energy of her chart focused on the ninth house. Ninth house is all about your father. It's all about your teachings, your guru, your religion. And so when I was studying Tulsi Gabbard's uh, upbringing a little bit, it looks like both of her parents were uh, religious. I think one parent was Christian or Catholic and then another parent was Hindu. And Tulsi Gabbard is Hindu, so she she's... Very, religion's probably a very important part of her life. One thing to notice is Mars and the sun in her chart are only two degrees from each other. So that makes Mars what's called combust. When the sun is really close to a planet like that, Mars is not gonna be functioning like another, a normal Mars would. So she could have problem with, I think of the sun is like, it makes something, it puts more pressure, like it makes it a pressure pot. So, and especially with Mars, Tulsi could be somebody who could lose her temper very easy because Sun and Mars are together, very close, two degrees with in, with in the orb of each other. She could be somebody very impulsive, easy to anger. So she must be very strong woman, for sure. Intimidating, probably. You don't get to become a representative of Hawaii without having that, that gusto. But Sun and Mars can just mean that she can get a little too heated, like her response to Hillary Clinton might have been just too gut reaction. You know, like she's, she's so easy to trigger, it's a gut, gut reaction. Hey, you're the queen of warmongers, you know. And I'm not defending Hillary Clinton at all. I'm just saying that her reaction, that angry reaction might be so fast. Then we have Venus in the 10th house of Aries. So obviously Tulsi Gabbard, when I, when I saw on the debate stage, she, she appeared to me to be one of the younger uh, politicians on that stage. And, you know, so she kind of has that glowing countenance. She was the one in the white clothing. So Venus makes you attractive to the public. And 10th house is public visibility and public seeing you. So on that debate stage, Tulsi Gabbard wearing that white, like, uh, business suit and her just being young, kind of that... I don't know why fair maiden, I, I don't know why that just came to my head, but that look, you know, she stood out and that's Venus giving her that, that edge. And she's going to do very well in politics because a lot of it is just public visibility, who you know, uh, your attractiveness. Sometimes it's not even much about your ideas, guys. But with all these planets in the ninth house, I would think though, because Mercury's in the ninth house, she does have a lot of guiding philosophies and guiding um, principles in her life. With that all being said, is Tulsi Gabbard a Russian asset? I would say no. This, this, I don't see any like 
there's nothing there that's telling me like she is some sort of a traitor or some sort of scammer and that she's a Russian asset like Hillary Clinton is trying to say. However, with Rahu being in the first house, there could be a fake patriotism there. So the fake patriotism with, and that's so many politicians have that fake patriotism. They act like they really, really love the country. And it's really like, they're just trying, it's all about moving up their political careers. That's what it is. It's not even like they really care about the people of the country. They just want to get up to high office, you know, house of representatives, Senate, presidential cabinet, president, you know, himself or herself. So, I mean, I, I don't see that as totally being, you know, Russian asset or something like that. I see that just being a politician. So I think we're going to see Tulsi Gabbard around for a while. I mean, based on just this moon chart I'm seeing, we're going to see her around for a while. She, she definitely is becoming a huge name during this Democratic nomination race. I don't believe, like, she's not going to win this Democratic nomination. But, I mean, in future races... And then also her just moving up her political career. Definitely, this is she's on a, a, a winning trajectory there. So there you have it. I think that Tulsi Gabbard is not a Russian agent, but she's definitely, you know, trying to politically advance herself as much as possible. Thank you so much for watching. And also, guys, tell me what you think in the comments down below. Am I dead wrong? Or maybe I'm being too easy on Hillary Clinton. Just comment down below. I'm, I love seeing those things. If you like this video, please smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos with predictions and things like that. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.